you're going to get just a bit tighter old-fashioned rows. When you're done with um, creating the rows the way that you would, would like it to be, you're going to take your needle and you're going to go through so that you pick up all of the seam allowances. You want to make sure you're catching in the very first one you did where you, where you turned the center of the rows. And it's a good idea just to give a little tug on that so it comes in nice and tight. And I do this, I move over about an inch, and I do this back and forth all the way around the base. When you know you've got your, um, your uh, seam allowances stabilized, you can remove your hairpin. And we'll take one more catch across. What I do when I know this is going to go into a stem, I will take my final um, pull and wrap my thread. This is another good reason why we're using um, quilting thread. And wrap that around several times, drawing in the edge. It's also a good um, plan if you're going to do a stemmed rose to um, get your stem in there as you're doing your rolling. I didn't do it this time, but that's what I would recommend. Once you have that done, you'll be taking a really um, light gauge wire and wrapping around tight and adding this into your stem, covering it with um, floral tape. As you wrap the floral tape around, you can also wrap leaves into it. So that's how you would get a stemmed rose. If you're going to do um, a rose that's going to be finished on the bottom, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to be doing it so that it goes inside out. In this case, we have the right side to the inside, and we've stitched all the way around, and we hit the stop place. What we're going to do here is remove the paper clips. Remove the pins at the start and the stop. Take your templates off. Your first template will come off nicely. Your inside template this time, you're going to turn your whole tube right side out. Again, we left our needle and thread together, here threaded. We just dropped that down to the side. I want you to turn the inside tube back on itself as you're pulling the template out. Again, you just manipulate this. It'll, it'll straighten out. Just bring it down. Um, varying types of fabric will turn better than others. I noticed that the um, chiffon just turns itself inside out really easily. This sometimes takes a little bit more manipulating to get it to work. Okay, once that's inside out, of course you're going to want to go in there and pull out the tube. that out. This is the part you can edit. Okay, once that's worked all the way out to the tip, and sometimes you'll want to take a little um, pin, work the tip all the way out. And be careful not to snag your fabric when you're using a needle, so be very gentle.
Once that's out, the next thing that you're going to need to do is to stitch the opening at the back end closed. And what I usually do in this case is I, I go into the tube a little bit, find out where my last stitch was, bring my needle to the top, fold the tip in, fold right and left inside, making a nice little point, turning that up on itself, which gives me my hem. Again, this does not have to be exacting work. Pin it so it, it's held while you're going to stitch it closed. Going back here and we're working the uh, seam allowance in. We're going to use what's called a ladder stitch or a slip stitch. And we're going to just pick up inside the folds on both sides. So we're going to go on the left side and then down on the right side. And this will close up that opening. Again, this is not an exacting science. You don't, your stitches don't have to be exactly the same size. Um, you're actually, this is a gathering stitch, so you're going to be pulling up on this when you're done. Okay, we're down to the end. I'm going to take one last stitch this direction, and I catch the other side of the fold in, and then I am ready to gather. Again, as you gather, you want to turn it so that all of the gathering seam allowance is to the top. I'm going to do a really fluffy one, so I'm going to have fairly tight gathers. Again, I'm going to get my hair clip, stick it in the top of the beginning point, and begin turning over on itself, catching up the gathered seam allowance. And you'll notice that the seam allowance is to the inside of the row, so this bottom section here is finished. You don't have any raw edges sticking out. Pick up your needle, and again, insert it in through, making sure that you're picking up all of the seam allowances. I usually keep the, my um, bobby pin in there so that um, it holds that center piece until I get it anchored. Once again, we're going over a few, about a half inch, going through as many of the seam allowances that we can pick up. to rotate all the way around. Just to speed this up, I'm going to fin show you a finished one. This is what it would look like when it's completely done. This gives you the opportunity then to add leaves and create uh, with crinoline on the back. You're going to be able to make a corsage. You would just hot glue your pin on and that would be give you a completed project right there. You can also put them the small ones, this, these are done in chiffon, they can go on a hair clip. So you're having the hair clip and adding some uh, beads on there. You can combine it with uh, some, some netting and give a little extra dimension to the rows. You can put it on a Headband, hairband, for a little extra touch to that wedding dress, flower girl dress. You can add it with our bow maker 
and you, you can create a wonderful top to a package or you can create a corsage with this as well. And one of the most fun things to do is to create compositions. So one of the things you can do is make a variety of different sizes of the roses and add it in with yo-yos and other formed flowers to make a wonderful composition that can go on the top of a memory box.